He is known for being an English essayist, critic, and philosopher. He is recognized for his contributions as one of the greatest critics and essayists in English literature. His name is William Hazlitt. In the bustling streets of 19th century England, a man named William Hazlitt emerged as a brilliant mind, leaving an indelible mark on the world of literature, art, and philosophy. Hazlitt was not just an essayist and critic, but a true Renaissance man of his time. His keen intellect and insightful observations earned him the reputation as one of the greatest critics and essayists in the history of the English language. With his sharp pen and discerning eye, Hazlitt became known as the finest art critic of his age. His words had the power to capture the essence of a painting, to delve into its depths and extract its true meaning. He had the rare ability to articulate the emotions and sensations that art evoked, connecting the viewer with the artist's intention. Hazlitt's writings not only provided a window into the world of art, but also served as a guide for aspiring artists and critics alike. Beyond his contributions to the world of literature and art, Hazlitt forged deep connections with some of the greatest minds of his era. His friendships with luminaries such as Charles and Mary Lamb, Stendhal, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, William Wordsworth, and John Keats added to his intellectual prowess and expanded his horizons. Through these relationships, Hazlitt engaged in lively discussions, exchanging ideas and philosophies that shaped his own worldview. Today, while Hazlitt's work may be lesser known and often overlooked, his legacy as a master critic and philosopher endures. His writings continue to inspire and provoke thought, reminding us of the power of art and the importance of critical thinking. William Hazlitt, the protagonist of his own intellectual journey, left an enduring imprint on the world of literature, forever etching his name among the greatest minds of his time. William Hazlitt, a renowned philosopher and writer of the 18th century, was born into a family of Irish Protestants. His father, also named William Hazlitt, was a Presbyterian who later became a Unitarian minister. Despite his religious background, Hazlitt's father found himself questioning his faith and eventually moved to England. In 1764, he became a pastor in Wisbeach and married Grace Loftus, the daughter of a deceased ironmonger. The Hazlitt family had their fair share of hardships, as many of their children did not survive infancy. However, three of their children managed to overcome the odds. Their firstborn, John, came into the world in 1767 while the family was living in Marshfield, Gloucestershire. Soon after, the family relocated to Maidstone, Kent, where their only surviving daughter, Margaret, was born in 1770. Growing up in a household filled with intellectual curiosity and religious questioning, William Hazlitt was exposed to a diverse range of ideas from an early age. These experiences would shape his philosophy and approach to life. Hazlitt's upbringing taught him the importance of questioning established beliefs and seeking truth for oneself. Hazlitt's philosophy encourages us to challenge the status quo and not blindly accept societal norms. He believed in the power of individual thought and the freedom to explore different perspectives. By embracing this mindset, we can navigate the complexities of daily life with a critical and independent mindset. William, the youngest of the surviving Hazlitt children, was born in Mitre Lane, Maidstone, in 1778. In 1780, when he was two, his family began a nomadic lifestyle that was to last several years. From Maidstone his father took them to Bandon, County Cork, Ireland, and from Bandon in 1783 to the United States, where the elder Hazlitt preached, lectured, and sought a ministerial call to a liberal congregation. In 1786-87 the family returned to England and settled in Wem, in Shropshire. Hazlitt would remember little of his years in America, save the taste of barberries. Hazlitt was educated at home and at a local school. At age 13 he had the satisfaction of seeing his writing appear in print for the first time, when the Shrewsbury Chronicle published his letter condemning the riots in Birmingham over Joseph Priestley's support for the French Revolution. In 1793 his father sent him to a Unitarian seminary on what was then the outskirts of London, the new college at Hackney. The schooling he received there, though relatively brief, approximately two years, made a deep and abiding impression on Hazlitt. The curriculum at Hackney was very broad, including a grounding in the Greek and Latin classics, mathematics, history, government, science, and, of course, religion. Much of his education there was along traditional lines, however, the tutelage having been strongly influenced by eminent dissenting thinkers of the day like Richard Price and Joseph Priestley, there was also much that was nonconformist. Priestley, whom Hazlitt had read and who was also one of his teachers, was an impassioned commentator on political issues of the day. This, along with the turmoil in the wake of the French Revolution, sparked in Hazlitt and his classmates lively debates on these issues, as they saw their world being transformed around them. Although Hazlitt rejected the Unitarian theology, his time at Hackney left him with much more than religious skepticism. 
He had read widely and formed habits of independent thought and respect for the truth that would remain with him for life. He had thoroughly absorbed a belief in liberty and the rights of man, and confidence in the idea that the mind was an active force which, by disseminating knowledge in both the sciences and the arts, could reinforce the natural tendency in humanity towards good. The school had impressed upon him the importance of the individual's ability, working both alone and within a mutually supportive community, to effect beneficial change by adhering to strongly held principles. The belief of many Unitarian thinkers in the natural disinterestedness of the human mind had also laid a foundation for the young Hazlitt's own philosophical explorations along those lines. I have a hatred of tyranny, and a contempt for its tools. I cannot sit quietly down under the claims of barefaced power, and I have tried to expose the little arts of sophistry by which they are defended, Hazlitt once declared. And indeed, his experiences and education shaped his deep-rooted commitment to freedom and justice. Despite his loss of faith, Hazlitt retained a passion for truth and the power of the human mind to bring about positive change. His philosophical explorations were influenced by the belief that individuals, working together, could counteract the oppressive forces of tyranny. William Hazlitt, a young philosopher and aspiring writer, had always been captivated by the power of words and ideas. It was in January 1798 that his life took a momentous turn when he encountered the renowned poet and philosopher Coleridge while attending a sermon in Shrewsbury. Coleridge's eloquence and erudition left Hazlitt spellbound, as if poetry and philosophy had met together. Truth and genius had embraced, under the eye and with the sanction of religion. This encounter with Coleridge marked the beginning of a profound influence on Hazlitt's life and work. In the following months, Hazlitt seized the opportunity to visit Coleridge at his residence in Nether Stowey. On that same day, he was introduced to another literary luminary, William Wordsworth. Hazlitt was entranced by Wordsworth's ability to perceive the world through a poet's eyes, and upon reading Wordsworth's lyrical ballads, he was struck by the presence of a new style and spirit in poetry. The visit was a whirlwind of conversations about poetry, philosophy, and the revolutionary political movements of their time. This unity of spirit, shaped by their shared ideals of liberty and the rights of man, fueled Hazlitt's own intellectual pursuits. While their shared passions brought them together, differences in philosophical outlooks also emerged. Hazlitt found himself disagreeing with Wordsworth on the philosophical foundations of his poem The Recluse, and he was astounded when Coleridge dismissed the esteemed philosopher David Hume as a charlatan. Nevertheless, the three-week visit instilled in Hazlitt a deep appreciation for both philosophy and poetry as sources of knowledge and inspiration. It was during this visit that Coleridge recognized Hazlitt's potential as a thinker, describing his thoughts as, well-headed and well-feathered, sent straightforwards to the mark with a twang of the bowstring. Despite the profound impact of this encounter, Hazlitt ultimately chose not to pursue a pastoral vocation. However, he never abandoned his dedication to the pursuit of knowledge and the power of words. Hazlitt recognized that his ability to express his thoughts and understanding in vivid imagery and illusion was owed, in large part, to the influence of Coleridge. This formative experience with Coleridge and Wordsworth ignited a fire within Hazlitt, inspiring him to delve deeper into his own philosophical ideas and writings. The life and works of William Hazlitt, encompassing poetry, painting, and marriage, were shaped by his encounters with Coleridge and Wordsworth. The unity of philosophy and poetry that he witnessed during this time propelled him on his own intellectual journey. Hazlitt's story teaches us the importance of embracing different perspectives and finding inspiration in the arts and philosophy. By recognizing the power of words and ideas, we can navigate the complexities of daily life with a deeper understanding and appreciation for the world around us. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.